All right, the same voltage uh, summation, this alternative summation approach, can of course be applied to mesh analysis. Now we've seen this problem before. I'm defining my mesh currents as I1, I2, and I3. And once again, I'd advise you to draw your mesh currents all in the same direction. That is, in this case, the clockwise uh, direction, okay? So what we're going to do here is really sum the voltages around that mesh loop, all right? And we're gonna take the I1 mesh first, okay? Using this alternative voltage summation technique. So let's go for this, all right? So here we are. Uh, we're gonna start right here, okay? And we're gonna say, what have we got here? We're gonna start with a minus, and we're gonna say that's a, a minus 15, all right? We're gonna come across this resistor. Now remember your mesh current really is going in this direction, isn't it? Which defines actually a voltage plus minus across that resistor. And in the past we said that we're dropping from a plus to a minus, and so we would have called that a minus I1 times 500. But in this case, since we're hitting the positive first, we're gonna call that a plus. And so we're gonna call that plus uh, I1 really times 500, okay? Then we come across the next component, okay? Um, and next component has a current I1 minus I2 flowing through it, and we're considering the polarity then being plus minus, so we really hit the plus first. So that is a plus, open up my bracket, that will be I1 minus I2 times 1K. Then we've got our next component here, which is this voltage source. We're hitting the plus first, so we're gonna call that a plus 25 and then we've got this component over here the 4k resistor and we're saying let's open up a bracket here this is what this is an i1 minus an i3 close the bracket and because i've defined i1 minus i3 that's defining the voltage across this guy as plus minus so we're hitting the plus first and so we'll say that is plus and that is times 4k and all of that is equal to zero so there is our first mesh current equation. All right, so that's the I1 mesh current equation. The I2 mesh current equation, what is this? Let's once again go around the mesh uh, in that clockwise direction. So I think you can see the pattern here, right? This would be what? This would be a plus, open up the bracket, that's I2 minus I1 times 1K. I2 is the lead current in this case, which is defined a plus minus voltage across that. We're hitting the plus guy first, so that's why we've got the plus sign here. Okay, coming to the next component, that would be a plus, that would be what? I2 times 3K. And then this component over here, this is again an I2 minus an I3. Okay, I2, my lead current here in my I2 mesh. And so that would be a plus over here, that is times 2K. We're back to the beginning, all of that being equal to zero. That is the I2 mesh. Then the last mesh current here, which is the I3 mesh. All right, let's see where we're starting. Oh, look, let's go ahead and start right here. We'll go in this direction. So what have we got? We've got I3 minus I1. I3, of course, is my lead current which is defined a voltage plus minus across that resistor. Um, and with this convention, we're hitting the plus first, so we call that a plus, all right? And that's times 4K. Then we've got our voltage source here. We're going from what, a minus? So we hit the minus first, so we call that a minus 25. Then we're coming across to this resistor, I3 is first, so that's an I3 minus an I2, close the bracket. And again, since I3 is my lead current, that's defining that voltage plus minus, isn't it? So we have a plus sitting here, and that's times 2K. Our final component over here, of course, is going to be a plus I3 times that 5K, and all of that is equal to zero. So um, basically now we can solve for what I1, I2, and I3 in that particular problem. Mm -hmm.